my name is Dorothy Ford King. I live in Voluntown, Connecticut. I've been a pastel artist for over 40 years. And my favorite thing to do is landscapes. Unfortunately, during the winter, it's not possible to paint outside in Connecticut. So I've been working from photographs this past winter. And I was asked to do a demonstration of a pastel. So I decided to do one of this picture from New Zealand um, at a bed and breakfast that a friend of mine went to. So I hope you enjoy seeing all the steps I have and um, that it gives you some insight as to how I do my pastel paintings. Thank you. So this is a photograph I chose to do my pastel demonstration. Um, it's a bed and breakfast in New Zealand that a friend of mine visited. And I really like the colors, the vibrancy of the blues and the yellows and the greens. And so I thought it would be a good subject to do a pastel demonstration for. My first picture you can see that I've gotten some colors into the sky and into the walls and they're not the colors that are actually there. I'm using this as a base. Um, I learned this technique from Robert Karsten who's a really good pastel artist I took a workshop with and I kind of thought this picture would look good using that technique because of the brightness of all the colors. In this second picture, I've taken alcohol and I've sprayed the painting and used a brush to blend in the, co the color so that the whole pastel sheet is covered now with a, a base to work from. And step number three, I've now started to put in some of the actual colors over the, the base and just trying to get a little more detail into what I had started with. You can see that the blue comes through in the yellow and the pink comes through in the sky. And I really like how that looks, um, like that technique. My next picture, I've started to put the darkest darks in and the lightest lights. Now the painting is starting to look like there's actually a foreground and a background. And um, step number five, I've continued to lay in those lights and darks. Let's straighten this out a little bit. I've put in more detail into the foreground. Um, more detail into the stone wall and I'm playing around with how I will handle the trees and bushes and show more definition of what is close and what is farther away. I've also connected a few, corrected a few of the errors that I had noticed. And after I complete each step, I take my pastel and I lean it up against the wall in the living room and I look at it and try to see if I can find any changes I would like to make or, um, if I should just stop where I am. <laughs> this next step, step number six, I've started to work on the foliage of the large tree in the right and the bushes on around the stone wall. And I'm realizing that the yellow on the wall is still just not right. It's Even though I've put gray into it, um, I'm not real happy with how it's looking. Um, so that's something I'm gonna to have to continue to work on in my next phase. I've also started to put in some pinks and warmth into the pathway in the front there um, because the sun is shining on that spot. Step number seven, I've developed that tree in the background and the bushes behind the stone wall. I'm constantly thinking about how I should work the trees and the bushes on the right because in the actual photograph, it was just uh, too much color, too much light, and it was just pulling away from how the picture was gonna look in the end. So I've kind of kept that subdued and dark and trying to work in that area so that um, it doesn't take over the picture. And my last photograph is step number eight. And this, I remedied the yellow wall. I brought in some 
um, blues and some greens and some darker yellows to, to really get that so it looks like in shadow and I, I'm much happier with the way that looks. I've also introduced light along the ivy. I've fixed some of the detail on the stone wall. I've put some lights in on the bushes. Um, so I really tried to pull this together. It's good to know when to stop on a painting and I will continue to look at this for possible changes I might want to make, but overall this is where I want this painting to be. And I hope you like this demonstration so you can see how I develop a pastel painting. And I will continue with showing you some of my pastels and the type of paper I use. So this is the pastel uh, completed. I didn't quite get the whole picture in on my video, so I thought I would show this in its completion. Um, also, I wanted to show you the type of pastels I use. I use um, several different kinds. I use the, my old Rembrandt set, um, which has been around for about 40 years. And I use um, Conti crayons, which are much harder, but I like those for some of the detail that I can put in. And what I've been doing lately is I've started to separate some of my colors so that I'm not always searching for the right green or the right blue. Um, so I just got some of these uh, cases and I'm going to see how that works out for me because sometimes all these colors get a little overwhelming. Um, I also have my Sennelier pastels. This is a great set. Um, I've had this set for about 30 years. And you can see it's still going strong. I did purchase additional pieces that I seem to use over and over again. But overall, it's really lasted really well. Um, I use generally 400 grade paper, sanded paper. I find that that is a good grade to hold the pastel to the tooth and I can get detail in with it. And um, this painting took me about five hours to complete. I am not a quick painter and it, chances are I'll do some more changing to it, but this is my demonstration. Thank you.